We're a nonprofit organization that's a legal advocate for student journalists. That's Mark Goodman, executive director of the Student Press Law Center. Freedom of the press, as it relates to student-run media outlets, has been a contentious issue between many college administrations and their students. The SPLC responded to 2,500 student media instances in 2006 alone. Goodman says their cases are increasing by approximately several hundred every year. It seems more and more college students are siding with their administration these days, a trend that seems to be originating in high schools. According to the Knight Foundation, of nearly 15,000 high school students polled in 2006, 30% thought that the press in America had too much freedom. Mark Heistand, an attorney and consultant for the SPLC, said the increasing unpopularity of the media amongst high school students and their disregard for First Amendment rights is frightening. I don't know that students today、um, have as much appreciation for free speech as. You know, as as maybe we had in the past. I, I don't know. I mean, there there seems to be、um, on on many campuses、um, kind of a lack of understanding about what free speech is all about. In fact, a current trend on the rise in the violation of student media rights is the theft of newspapers from their stands. Oh, you know that that's a weird thing. We, we we've got a lot of problems、um, with newspaper theft. When I first started here. Oh, in the very early '90s,、um, we were maybe seeing you know two to three newspaper thefts a year, and they were typically you know kind of you know drunken fraternity pranks and things like that.、Um, but right around is probably '92, '93,、um, we had some some fairly you know well publicized newspaper theft incidents, and it, and the idea I guess of newspaper theft at that time just kind of took off to the point that we're now seeing. You know, typically anywhere between about thirty and fifty thefts a year. Heiston said students aren't taking into consideration that just because a newspaper is distributed for free, it is not free to make. You know, it's become a real problem where、um, you know folks are going out and, and because they don't like what's in the newspaper, they understand that if you simply take the newspaper, if you steal the newspaper,、uh, that's about the most effective form of censorship there is. For many advocates of free speech, it is disconcerting that so many students don't have a concrete understanding of what the First Amendment entails.、Um, you know, these are our, our future leaders, and to think that you know they really don't have the sort of respect for some of our you know just very basic understandings of what it's you know what what it is to, to operate in a free society.、Um, that's you know I, I think that should that's a ought to be a wake up call for all of us. Many colleges and universities around the nation are finding that the only foolproof way to avoid conflict with their campus administration is to be completely independent. For instance, the Daily Bruin at the University of California, Los Angeles, does not retain any money from student fees. Their publication staff and rent are completely funded through their advertising. However, complete independence is highly reliant on the surrounding market, and is a virtually impossible economic endeavor for most student publications. For every college or university that achieves independence, there are dozens more that are not so lucky. There are numerous schools facing both blatant and underhanded violations of their First Amendment rights. A student publication at a community college in Texas is currently addressing several violations against their First Amendment rights. The publication is paid for through student fees and claims itself to be the student voice, but no publication is allowed to go to press until it meets the approval of several non-student college employees. Francis, who has chosen to withhold her last name, the photo editor and web designer of the publication, said the process is frustrating. The process of publication consists of stories going through the newspaper specialist, a non-student who acts as managing editor to the paper. It then goes on to the student life coordinator and then the director of student life. There have been a couple stories that have been delayed in publication to date. Francis said the whole process is belittling. I, it's really sad that for so many people, I mean, because you know it is a community college. It's people who, for the most part, are a little bit older and a lot of bit poorer, and are still just trying to. Get through the educational system and better themselves in some way, and nobody takes us seriously ever. Goodman said that the hiring of non-students by the administration to run and have control over a student-run publication is both a moral and political crime. I mean, you know, just from an educational standpoint, that's just so reprehensible and embarrassing. I mean, you know, the whole idea that a school says, you know, our students can't handle free expression, and so we have to have a, you know. Professional staff member serve as parent slash editor for them. I mean, it's it's embarrassing. And if I were a college or university doing that, I would feel extremely 
humiliated. You know, I mean, it's one of those things that isn't done at reputable colleges and universities anywhere in the country, and for them to imply that they some for some reason have to do it because their students are too stupid or or you know immature to make you know wise decisions is just. It's a sad reflection on the school, I think, and probably not based on an accurate assessment of the students they're dealing with. But you know, ultimately, I would argue it's also illegal. As the future of free speech and student media outlets may seem bleak, there does appear to be hope. On November six of two thousand six, California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger signed into act the Leonard Law, making California the first state in the nation to pass legislation abolishing student censorship. Instigated by a leaked memo to the California State University system that said the universities had more latitude in censoring student newspapers than previously believed, the Leonard Law applies to all colleges and universities, public and private. California is only one state out of fifty, and it may be a while before every state adopts similar legislation. Goodman suggests that students, in the meantime, take certain steps to ensure their rights. Well, you know, one thing we've learned over the years is the best thing that a publication can do is to get clear policy statements in place. Both internal and external, as in those you know recognized by the college or university, that explicitly say student editors have the final authority for making content decisions. Period.、Uh, you know, the clearer that language is,、uh, and the the more likely it's present, the less likely there's going to be an an、um, A conflict later on,、um, because you know those policies in and of themselves can provide rights, you know, beyond those in the First Amendment. Goodman also says that it's important to remember that the climate can change every time there's a turnover in the administration.、Uh, you know, I'd also say. You know, it's really important for student editors to constantly be vigilant and recognize that you know, no matter how good a job they do, no matter how, how good a relationship they've had traditionally with their campus administration, one controversial or unpopular story can be enough to you know end all that. And、um, what they probably need to do is be constantly you know cultivating allies on campus who will be there and off campus too, who will be there to support them if a conflict arises. This is Tika Ballas with KRUA News. A little bit of news, some of the time.